So our next speaker is Zarun Navasarjan from Metric. website is in the database, great, they have a result. If not, sorry, uh, we uh, can uh, tell nothing about the company. Um, so the next step, whenever databases are, have not high quality, is to label data ourselves. Um, there are many uh, labeling service providers. We, go, uh, we can go um, uh, this way and uh, label data. Um, but while uh, the website categorization seems to be very simple, but it can be very tricky. Let's see an example. For example, we have uh, a website uh, for, uh, for um, that is um, um, that is providing education in medical sphere. Um, whenever a person, even uh, people, when going to that website, first thing they uh, 
main thing is that the website is in the healthcare industry because uh, all the thing they see there are some doctor images some medical uh, terms etc but in fact the real service industry of the company is education so human error here uh, can um, be very problematic and at the end supervised learning is not scalable is not flexible so if we want to uh, fit in this dynamic world we need to um, be flexible and update our model over time so what we suggest here is to use limited label data techniques techniques which can be zero shot learning uh, when the model is trained on several classes and then new classes are predicted and few shot learning which is our choice um, when the model is trained on a small limited amount of examples per class uh, so we are going to go with uh, few shot learning uh, let's uh, first um, have a very uh, high level imagination image of uh, how our approach works. So we have a base a support set which contains examples uh, from each category, uh, limited number, say three or five. Um, we have this set. Whenever we want to classify a website, we compute similarity score between the website and each of the categories. Whenever we have the similarity scores for each category, uh, we rank them, we assign the top category to the website. So this is the overall image of the approach. We will go now uh, deeper into each of the steps. Uh, first, and the mo one of the most important parts here is the support set, how we collect it. First, we should define the categories. So what are the categories we want to have uh, website, uh, websites in. Uh, we should have labeled examples for each of the category and then as we are in the textual content we need to scrape uh, the main page of the website and get text. So we are working uh, with text. We need just to have the category and the text. The website component is not so important here anymore. And the next step is the inference part already. Whenever we have uh, a new website to categorize, for simplicity, let's assume we have three categories, health, AI, and finance. Uh, we pass all those texts through, through an embedding model to have vectorized representations. And after that, uh, we compare those vectors with, with each other. So we compute uh, distance between metric and AI, metric and finance, metric and health. And we see that the most similar category is AI, so we categorize metric as an AI website. Uh, so we see that the approach is dependent on several uh, factors. The three key factors that will define the success of our approach um, are the choice of basis, the choice of a good embedding model, which um, is required to uh, capture the semantic similarity, and a uh, good choice of similarity measure. So when we uh, were thinking about how to optimize the embedding model for the task and similarity measure for the task, we came up with the idea to uh, use Siamese networks, which are a very uh, famous and popular architecture in computer vision uh, for face identification or um, signature verification. So we decided to apply Siamese networks instead of the whole story I spoke earlier. Uh, so how Xiaomi's networks work? Uh, we have two texts there. Two in the input are two objects, in our case two texts. Uh, both of them pass through uh, exactly identical sub-networks uh, of the Xiaomi's network. Um, which consists of an encoder layer, a small simple network, uh, which uh, consists of um, some dense layers, normalization dropout, it can vary from case to case. So then we get a smaller representation of the text for both of text, and it is very important that those two networks share the, their weight so that the representations are identical. And then those two representations are 
concatenated in a layer, they pass through a distance uh, function, uh, then the distance uh, passes through a sigmoid function in a dense layer, and we get a probability between 0 and 1, uh, which is called probability, but is not. Um, it is, in fact, the distance measure. <coughs> so what the idea of Siamese network is, is that we uh, give two objects as input, and it outputs the distance between those two objects, no matter the objects are text or images or whatever. Uh, so the CLB's network um, is optimized through contrastive loss. Um, to understand better the idea of contrastive loss, um, first let's see what how the training uh, examples of the network look like. We have uh, we told that we have two text as input, but while training we need also a label. So we, if those two texts are from the same class, the label is one. If those two texts are from different classes, the label is zero. So, uh, the contrastive loss uh, fully um, demonstrates the idea behind Siamese networks. Uh, so we see that D is uh, the Euclidean distance between two examples. Uh, we want to minimize the distance between two examples that are from the same class and maximize the distance between two examples that are from different classes, which is done simultaneously. Uh, so uh, here also the margin is int introduced, which is a, a tightening condition. Uh, we say that we want the uh, distance between two uh, dissimilar examples be at at least margin. So this is for uh, tightening the process. In fact, uh, we see that Siamese networks like combine several steps described before. So the embedding step and the distance calculation step, and we have a model which uh, gets as input raw text and outputs the distance. Why should we use Siamese networks, uh, tr uh, do training, and then pass through several steps? Um, instead of using the simple approach I described, there are several uh, very important advantages that Siamese network uh, has, uh, not only combining the, uh, all those steps in one place, um, but also um, it uh, can compute distance for new classes, which means uh, it learns to compute distance to uh, di uh, discriminate examples that are not from the same class. Uh, so whenever we have a new class, even though it was not uh, engaged in the training, we can have prediction, uh, distance prediction for that class. Um, Thanks to its learning process, it can capture semantic similarity, which is very important for website categorization. And as um, it learns not uh, like classical uh, models, uh, we have a we have the text and we have label. Here we have uh, we have two texts and we have label which shows whether those texts are from the same class or not. Uh, so the learning process is very different uh, and it can it can be very effective in sampling. Uh, to conclude, um, let's see uh, when should we use uh, Xiaomi's networks for website categorization and uh, what are the drawbacks of the approach, what <coughs> problems we will face if we decide to use future learning here. Uh, first of all, we should use the approach when we have only a few examples. So whenever we have huge labeled high quality data, we can go for a uh, supervised approach. Whenever we don't, we need to um, to do something to find a solution, uh, this future learning approach can be a good choice. And what is more important, we should use this approach whenever we are in a dynamic setting and we need to be flexible, whenever we need to change the classes, to add new classes, to remove classes, because uh, if we want the products to be used uh, by different users, uh, their taxonomy can be different, uh, the hierarchy can be different, the definition of different categories even can be different. So uh, if we are in a dynamic setting, we need to be flexible and we, uh, we should go for this approach. What are the drawbacks, the problems we also faced uh, when applying this approach? In the experimentation stage, we were really uh, challenged how to validate our model because we speak that we have no label data and how we are going to validate our model. What we did was to um, 
collect a small sample of examples for validation as well. So we have some examples as basis as supported, and we have some examples for validation. And uh, we decided to collect ourselves to be 100% sure about the accuracy of labeling. Um, CRV's networks came and uh, solved the problem of the choice of embedding model and um, optimal distance measure, but the basis remain very important and uh, the, the accuracy of the, of the approach depends on the choice and the, of the good choice of basis. And uh, we should like know that, uh, in fact, this usual learning <coughs> approach will most probably not be able to beat uh, supervised approach um, in accuracy. Um, of course, taking into account that we have uh, high quality labeled data. So that is what we did. What we thought about doing but didn't uh, but didn't was uh, first to use the visual content in the website. Uh, so we go for textual content, but visual content can be important as well, so we can combine it with text. Uh, go to other pages of the website. We are now concentrated on the main page of the website, but we can go, for example, to About Us, which can be very informative. And um, we can use other sources for information. For example, in the website, we can find the link to Facebook page of the uh, company, uh, then we can get the description or uh, the category itself from the Facebook page or other sources and uh, combine that information too. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think I will ask the first question. So, uh, the Siamese networks, do you initialize them from scratch? Uh, you start from nothing, or do you use uh, We use embedding? uh, pre-trained embeddings for the first layer. Uh, then we have a small network there, several dense layers, etc. Uh, we fine tune uh, that part of the architecture. Um, and then we use Euclidean distance. Now, maybe later, we will uh, change the distance measure as well. Yeah, my initial impression is that if you replace most of the two branches by something pre-trained like BERT. So it's huge, but I don't think you have a uh, uh, this problem, right? Oh, uh, what we did first it was uh, not even to use Siamese networks, but to have some pre-trained model and then uh, use some distance measure. Uh, we didn't experiment with that, so use a pre-trained model only, uh, and then to compute the distance with Siamese networks. That's a good idea, we will try. Okay, thank you. Yeah, first question. Uh, what is the input for, uh, what do you mean by text? Is it like a uh, you clean it, uh, you throw titles, or you leave some HTML markup like headings and st stuff, stuff like that, because I think that for site classification, some information uh, much more important than others, so for example, titles might be very important for good classifications. Classification, so, but if you just remove all the text, uh, then uh, you, uh, your model will not understand if this uh, text was entitled or not. Uh, what I was present, presenting was one part of our algorithm. We uh, sometimes combine several other components as well, like the title from the website, the description, meta description, which can be very important and very um, like on, on the point. Um, what we do, we treat them separately. Sometimes we treat them with the same approach. Sometimes we have several other like keyword-based approaches uh, for that part. Um, but for this part, we clean the text from uh, HTML text and we keep the clean text uh, because we want to capture the <coughs> semantics of the text. So we remove words that are um, not and that are, cannot integrate it. And uh, do you work on full text? I mean, uh, the text could be of very different length. For example, what do you do with really large text if you pass it from the site? Uh, 
Um, as we are working uh, uh, only with the main page of the website, uh, generally the text is not too long. Uh, the text, um, there are websites where there is no text, and uh, that is m more a problem. But uh, very uh, long text, uh, there are we met almost no cases where we have very long text. If we have very long text, we uh, work with it. We don't uh, do some. Uh, we don't remove some parts, we just work with it. And have you tried some very basic baselines like TFIDF? Because for documents, TFIDF <coughs> still uh, gives uh, very competitive results. Uh, it's it's uh, the first question. The second is like, uh, have you thought about uh, using Models which can uh, has uh, images and input and produce a description in natural text to extend the application of your technology to sites where you have a lot of pictures but not that many text. Uh, for the first question concerning TFIDF, first, of course, um, every time starting, uh, when starting to work with the text, we tried TFIDF, which was not so successful here because, in fact, uh, the texts uh, in the websites can be random. Like people put there whatever they want. Uh, so, more complex models uh, come to help here because um, the texts are sometimes, even for human, it is difficult uh, seeing on the text to um, capture the similarity. When it comes to the second question concerning images, uh, we didn't experiment yet, but we were thinking to uh, get the images from the website and also to have the first page of the website a screenshot and to start working with it and uh, capture some information from there as well. But we didn't experiment. No, actually, I, it's not a question either one comment Michael's. Uh, uh, I think, uh, as I understand, you just uh, uh, um, collect all the text from the main page, and but the, the, the sentences can be very d different from each other because they belong to a, a different paragraphs. You just uh, put in one bench and, and categorize. I think you sh uh, maybe it uh, it will be good to implement some kind of attention mechanism. So your uh, model will uh, know to uh, pay attention to some um, uh, some part of the website, but not the other part. And uh, actually, I don't realize how can it be done, but uh, if it uh, works, I think it will increase the accuracy. Okay, do we have more questions? Thank you. Uh, uh, can you go to the last slide, please? Uh, I, it was quite quick. Uh, uh, that's why I, I, I wanted to see it, uh, because my first question relates to that. So uh, do you consider to use knowledge graphs? Uh, to, do you think that it can enhance uh, uh, your algorithms in some way? I'm not sure now about the answer. We didn't uh, think about that. Um, maybe later uh, we can do that, but I'm not sure now. Okay, thanks. And uh, again, uh, about the text and the embeddings. So, uh, can you elaborate more on that? So, how can you like get uh, uh, comparable uh, embeddings? Uh, with like, different uh, sizes of text. So the idea here is uh, that we we do not want to really say this is the similar to this or whatever. Like uh, we don't want to be exactly correct. We don't to have correct ranking. So whenever uh, whether we have different text, we have text of different length, etc. Anyway, uh, afterwards, the uh, main goal of the algorithm is to see whether this is more similar to one category and less similar to other. So those um, 
problems that can be here uh, because of the difference of the websites, the length, length of the text, the cleaning of the text uh, do not uh, like do not impact much the result. Um, that is why we handle, uh, we don't go uh, very deep in handling this situation. Um, but anyway, for the future, of course, we can have some attention mechanism or some other mechanism to be able to get the most important parts of the text and don't have uh, text for, uh, with very different length. Okay, thank you. Okay. No more questions? Okay. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I don't know, maybe I skip this part, but what is the application of uh, this tool? I mean, uh, which sites, uh, what is your customer? Uh, so, but what we do is website categorization. We have the website. We uh, we have the website. We get the category. Uh, so the application can be very very different. For example, companies can use for marketing purposes. They have the websites of uh, different companies. They want to understand which of them are their target. Uh, so their target are, for example, healthcare companies. They can categorize those websites and get all the healthcare companies uh, for that purposes. Uh, they, uh, these can be uh, for uh, brand protection. They want to understand who are their competitors in the field. Uh, this can be also used for um, as mentioned already, activity monitoring, which can be for uh, big companies uh, often want to see the browser history of their uh, employees. So they categorize the websites to see what are the main categories their employees go for, um, or for some providers, they have already, they, all, all, uh, they also have user data, so they can classify the websites of users. And the algorithm, uh, apart from website categorization, what we are um, in train of doing uh, is to use the same algorithm for competitor search. Again, we find similarity uh, between several websites and we get the competitors of the company. OK, thanks. OK. So let's thank the speaker again.